Hello. The purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate how to use SPSS to run several HLM models. Specifically, I will demonstrate how to run a random intercept model, add in level 1 predictors, and then add in level 2 predictors. The steps involved follow a general build-up strategy for model testing in HLM. A copy of the data will be provided as a link underneath the video description, so be sure to download it if you want to follow along. An accompanying PowerPoint containing interpretations of the output will also be provided as a link underneath the video description. So if you find the video and supporting materials helpful, please take time to like the video and share the link with others. So let's begin with our example. In this example, we are predicting student exam scores, which is our level 1 outcome, from level 1 and level 2 predictors. The level 1 predictors include gender and standardized reading test scores, both of which are group mean-centered. Just so you know, prior to centering, the gender variable was coded 0 for male, 1 for female. The level 2 predictors include compositional variables at the school level, and they include proportion of females within schools and the average standardized reading test scores within schools. So within this data set, the first compositional variable for gender, which is this one right here, the second one for standardized reading test score uh, mean or average is this variable right here. So the first model that we are going to run is a random intercept model. And because no predictors are included in the model at level one, the intercepts are basically equal to the school means for the level one outcome variable. So here we have our data opened up in SPSS. We have the school identifier variable, that's our level 2 identifier, and then a level 1 identifier, which is student ID. So we have students that are nested within schools. The dependent variable at level 1 is exam scores. And just kind of as a recap, our predictors at level 1 are standardized reading test scores and gender, both of which were group mean centered. And then our level 2 compositional variables are the gender mean variable and standardized reading test score mean. So let's start off with our random intercept model, and we do this by going to Analyze, Mixed Models, go to Linear. I'm going to reset this, and we're going to move the school ID variable over to the subjects box. So th then we'll click on Continue, and then we'll move exam score, our outcome variable at level 1, to the dependent variable box. We'll click on Random, click on Include Intercept, and then move our um, our level 2 identifier variable again, our clustering variable over to the combinations box. We'll click on continue and then under the estimation tab we'll click on maximum likelihood. And within the PowerPoint I discuss a little bit about uh, the differences between these two methods or why you might choose one uh, over the other. Uh, but we'll, we're going to stick with maximum likelihood. Then we'll go to statistics and we're going to click on parameter estimates for fixed effects, test for covariance parameters, and then covariances of random effects. We'll click on continue and then on OK and then we end up with our output. So looking at our output, first notice that we have a model dimension table that contains the number of parameters that are being estimated. So for our first model, we have three parameters being estimated. We have the fixed effect associated with the intercept. We have the variance for the intercepts, that's a, a random effect. And then we have the level one uh, residual variance. So because we don't have any predictor variables, when we look at the uh, estimates of fixed effects, all we get is the uh, estimate for the intercept, which is this right here. So the fixed effect for the intercept is basically the grand mean of the intercepts across groups. So that is, this effect is the average of the intercepts or means that are computed across group. So you see right here that the grand mean um, is negative point zero one three one six seven. Now let's look at the estimates of covariance parameters. So we see that we have estimates for the level one variance and then of the residuals and then we also have the variance estimate associated with the intercepts and this is at level two. So you can see that both of these estimates are statistically significant. Just keep in mind that uh, this walled Z test is actually uh, utilizing a two-tailed test and since variance uh, a variance cannot be negative, uh, it's actually appropriate to split the p-value in half in order to test those variance components. Now if you want to obtain the intraclass correlation coefficient, um, 
unfortunately SPSS doesn't allow you to compute this directly but you can compute it using the variance estimates that we were just going over so if you just take the variance for the intercepts and place it over the sum of the, var the level 1 and level 2 variances uh, as I've done right here then that will get you the interclass correlation coefficient and for our example uh, the ICC is 0.166 so now let's add two fixed effects at level one. So we're going to add in the gender and standardized reading test score uh, predictors. So in this particular case, I should note that the intercepts and means for the groups are now being adjusted for the within cluster association between the level one predictors and the outcome. Now to run our analysis in SPSS, what we'll do is go to Analyze, Mixed Models, Linear, We'll go ahead and click on continue and now we'll add in our two predictor variables. So there's the reading test score and, um, oh excuse me, wrong one, our uh, standardized reading test score and gender, both of which again were group mean centered. We're going to click on fixed and move both of these over by clicking add, continue and then on OK and now we have our output for that particular model. So looking at our model dimension table, you can see that now we are estimating five total parameters. There's the fixed effect for the intercept, the standardized reading test score variable, and gender variables. And then we have the variance estimate for the intercept, and then the uh, estimate of the uh, level one residual variance. When we look at the estimates of fixed effects, now we see that we have regression slopes for both of our predictors, their standardized reading test score and gender, and both of these are positive and statistically significant. So basically, uh, for the first one, this is indicating that students who tended to do better uh, on uh, this, the uh, reading test uh, also tended to do better with respect to exam scores. Uh, with respect to gender, then basically this the positive coefficient is indicating that females within within schools females who females tended to perform better on exam scores as opposed to males okay so now looking at our estimates of covariance parameters these are the variance estimates this is the level one residual variance level two uh, variance for the intercepts and both of these again are statistically significant Finally, we have model three where we are now incorporating um, the compositional variables as predictors of the variation in intercepts across groups. So this is the compositional variables are being added uh, at level two. So to run this analysis, we'll go to analyze mixed models again, linear, continue, and then we'll add in the gender mean variable and the standardized reading test score mean variable. We'll click on fixed and then we'll move both of these variables over by highlighting and clicking add. Continue and then on OK and so now we have our final model that we were going to run in this particular demonstration. You see now that under the model dimension we have seven total parameters that are being estimated. So previously we had five, uh, we have seven because we added in the two compositional variables at level two. So we see at level one, standardized reading test scores and gender both were positive and significant predictors of exam scores. So within the schools, we see basically that students who scored higher on the standardized reading test scores uh, tended to perform better on exam score. And then also females uh, tended to perform better on exam scores than males. At level two, only the standardized reading test score mean variable was a significant uh, predictor. This result indicates the students attending schools with higher standardized reading scores were more likely to perform well on the exam. Then finally, we, uh, with respect to the gender compositional variable, the proportion of females attending a school uh, was unrelated to exam score. The uh, uh, estimates of covariance parameters, we see that both variance estimates are still statistically significant. And we do see that the ICC, after accounting for the level one predictors, um, basically was 0.115. So this is uh, lower than what we had originally with our random intercept model. So conclusions, the ICC and test of the variance component for the first model 
uh, as well as the remaining models su su suggested substantial clustering in the data. These findings supported the use of HLM as opposed to OLS regression in order to analyze the data. Altogether, the results suggest that student and school level standardized reading scores positively predict exam score. Within schools, student gender predicts exam scores with females scoring higher on average than males. Nevertheless, gender composition at the school level was not a significant predictor of exam score. Then finally, even after controlling for the predictors at levels 1 and 2, there remains significant variation uh, to be explained. So that concludes this demonstration and um, the last page of the PowerPoint, by the way, contains these references that were used to put this together. Um, so I appreciate you watching.